today we're going to be working on the other aspect of percussion, the marimba. By the way, I'm going to be using a marimba in this video. However, you can use a bell kit, vibraphone, almost anything, even a practice pad if you wanted to, to practice what we're going to be learning today. So holding marimba mallets is almost like holding snare mallets. You're going to want to put the end of the marimba mallet on the second digit of your index finger, put your thumb on top and curl it around, and do the same with your other hand. Also, just like with the snare six, you're going to want the top of your hand to be parallel with the ground. This is a very basic way to hold it. However, the difference between marimba and snare is that marimba doesn't have much of a rebound. So, when you come up to play, you don't want to start down like you do with the snare. Instead, you want to start up. So, when doing your marimba stroke, you're basically going to want to play almost like you're knocking on a door. Can you try that? Like you're knocking on a door. And you're going to do the exact same thing with your marimba mallets. Again, starting up. You want to almost aim to go through the key. Also, be careful not to downstroke. So downstroke is when you stop short, and then that basically creates problems because you then have to expend more energy to bring the mallet back up. So instead, you're want, going to want to make your stroke one full stroke, coming back up with a little bit of a rebound. And this is achieved when you stroke as if you were knocking on a door. You're also not going to want to keep your hand below the mallet when you play. So even when you're um, stroking all the way down, the lowest you're going to want your hand to go is horizontal. I mean, not horizontal, sorry, but the same level as the mallet. Don't let your mallet drop past your hand, or again, you're going to be playing a downstroke, and that's going to create problems with energy later on. So another important part of playing marimba is knowing which notes are which. And to do this, I'm going to label my marimba with some pieces of paper, However, most spell kits already come labeled, so you might not have to do this step if you're using a labeled bell kit. Other bands use different methods. For example, I knew a band that used a special kind of chalk to label their marimbas. Just make sure you're doing what your instructor or band director tells you to if you have one. Okay, so we've done that. So how do we memorize this? And this is a very specific thing. No one expects you to do it on your first say. However, there are a few tricks for how you memorize it. Some people will just memorize the location of C and go from there. So C is beneath, to the left and beneath, the two accidentals. By the way, accidentals are what we call the top notes of the marimba, and naturals are we had to be called the bottom notes on the bottom of the marimba. So if you memorize that C is below and to the left of the two accidentals, D flat and E flat, and you can go from there. Other people will do the same with F. F is below the three accidentals, G flat, A flat, and B flat, and then they go from there. Other people will use how a scale is put together, and especially if they come from a chorus background, they know Do, Re, Mi, and the different types of steps between notes. I'm not going to go into it here for the sake of time. By the way, some of you might have noticed that the accidentals had two different names. For example, this accidental is both C sharp and D flat. Why is that? 
So basically, every accidental has two different names because the notes are called sharps when you ascend and they're called flats when you descend. So the same note can have two different names. This isn't really important right now, but it will become important when we learn the different scales. But we'll get to that later. And you basically just go from there. By the way, the top part of your marimba is usually played as treble clef or everything above middle C, and everything below middle C is typically played as bass clef. But again, we'll get into all of that later. We have time. No rush, right? And now, time for a few puns. What's the pirate's favorite note? The C. What is a winged hymenoptera's favorite note? Give you in. It has stripes and a singer. It's a B. Oh, that wasn't good. By the way, shout out to Walton High School Band for winning the Super Bowl of Sound in Carrollton Saturday. Y'all guys were great. Not gonna spoil what my hands show was, but I think if you were there, you could guess.